So this year, the show many X299 motherboards are launching because of Skylake X platform that is launching in only a few weeks. And Asus, of course, had to show off their ROG editions uh, and also legendary tough boards and more mainstream prime models too. So let's take a few minutes to look at those motherboards that don't fit into the ROG series. But first, a message from our sponsors. Our Computex trip is brought to you by Fantex, Cooler Master, and MSI. I know we usually start off with a higher end, but the most interesting motherboard is actually the Prime X299-A. Honestly, this motherboard looks great while still keeping a ton of features, and many will gravitate towards the Dash A since it is supposed to be very affordable. And like more expensive motherboards, it supports up to three-way graphics configuration across a trio of X16 slots. You can add VROC arrays via the optional add-in card from ASUS, but only if the two onboard M.2 slots are not enough. Remember, ASUS allows you to use on board M.2 slots for VROG, so that will only come in handy if you're setting up a simple two drive rate arrays. And even if the understated looks aren't enough for you, there are still plenty of integrated LEDs and LED headers to put out more than enough RGB illumination. There's nothing left out on the connectivity front with USB 3.1 Gen 2 internal header for the chassis uh, front IO that supports the new 10 gigabits per second standard, plus type A and reversible type C ports at the rear. So if you're looking for a simple simple and affordable X299 board, this may be a perfect fit. But what happens if that's not enough? Well, ASUS has a big daddy, the X299 Deluxe. This is the board which has everything and leaves nothing else on the table. It will also be one of the most expensive motherboards in the uh, X299 lineup. It looks stunning with an extensive heatsink shroud, which keeps with the usual white and black color scheme. The chipset heatsink also houses the all new Live Dash, which is an integrated OLED screen capable of displaying valuable system information and custom graphics. And you can see vital stats like temperature, frequency, and fan speed without out tabbing away from your games when in full screen. Live Dash can also display text messages and graphics animations to set your rig apart from the rest. However, I do think that will only be useful for people who use a window on their case or don't have a graphics card in that slot that would cover this from the view. On the storage front, everything is covered well with a U.2 port and dual M.2 slots. Those two slots are pretty interesting since one is covered with a chipset heatsink for optimal temperatures, while the other is all the way up near the memory slot and mounted vertically. This may sound like an odd and potentially dangerous look but it's supposed to help reduce drive temperatures by allowing for better cooling from the system fans. As usual, the Deluxe gets a whole lot of RGB features with integrated lighting zones and Aura Sync, but ASUS is stepping things up uh, with next generation LED support. So this board is compatible with upcoming addressable lighting strips that offer independent control over each LED on the line, which enables considerably more advanced effects. Of course, those RGB headers are also able to power regular strips as well. ASUS even integrated the next generation dual band wireless 802.11 AD module, which can theoretically work up to 4.6 gigabits per second. And there are even add-in cards for Thunderbolt EX3 and fan extension included. And the next boards are the Tough series. Let's start with the Mark 1. The ASUS Tough series has a lot of history behind it with good reason. These motherboards are built with very best components and are then stress tested for countless hours before making their way to clients. A tough motherboard may not be as feature rich as Prime series board or the ROG board, but those things are replaced with longevity. Don't expect a ton of RGB lighting here, guys. This is all about making a rugged, stealthy motherboard. The latest board in this range is the X299 Tough Mark 1, and it looks quite a bit different than its predecessors since ASUS has designed a new reinforced armor that covers most of the PCB. Supposedly, this protective cover streamlines airflow from a dedicated fan over the board and helps to significantly reduce M.2 temperatures and prevents dust from accumulating in nooks and crannies. There's even a backplate that's made of folded metal for reinforcement against warping and included GPU holder that supports heavy graphics cards. And like other products in the tough lineup, the Mark 1 has a ton of additional temperature sensors to monitor different zones on the motherboard and in your system as a whole. Tough Detective is back again too. This smartphone power troubleshooter and monitoring utility was pretty good when we first tested it, but at this time it doesn't need a USB connection. Rather, all of the items are monitored wirelessly over Bluetooth using the included USB adapter. And if you don't want to spend the premium being charged on the Mark 1, ASUS is now launching the Tough Mark 2, which looks a lot like the Prime X299-A. Basically, it offers all of the tough upgrades in terms of components, but removes the extensive heatsink and goes with a bit more stealthy look. So if you're looking for a good blend of features and the motherboard that has been tested to the max, this one might be a good option too. 
And so that wraps our coverage on Asus X299 offerings at Computex. Remember, all of these boards will become available in the next few weeks, so stay tuned for our full reviews on them. Until then, keep watching, don't forget to subscribe for more coverage of Computex, and we'll see you in the next video.